24 hostages released by Hamas today and 39 Palestinian detainees have been freed by Israel. Uh, what is notable to you about how this day unfolded? Well, it didn't start off well. Uh, the ceasefire was broken uh, upwards into 15 minutes after 7 a.m. local uh, with, uh, with I guess there was a m m missile strike and then IDF responded. So it didn't start off well. And I was very nervous that it was a sign of things to come. But fortunately, the transfer went smoothly on both sides. And let's hope this continues over the next three days. Janice, the U.S. President, and Joe Biden played a role in bringing this deal to life. Uh, what does this tell us about the role of the U.S. Uh, in this war and in what's happening right now? You know, Ian, uh, President Biden has been absolutely central to these negotiations. He did something unusual. He took these negotiations away from the hostage negotiators and put Bill Burns, the director of the CIA, in charge. I think that was because this negotiation is, of course, about the hostages, but not only about the hostages. It is a platform, a doorway to a ceasefire which the president hopes he can extend. And Dan, I'm curious about your perspective on that, particularly the role of the CIA director in this. Well. It just goes to the level of how incredible. I've been tracking this a specific brand of, of hostage taking in the Islamic realm, going back to dealing with al-Qaeda for two years in Iraq. This has taken hostage terrorism to an entirely different level. And that's why the stakes were so, so challenging, because this negotiation did not happen across the table from Israel and Hamas. They are sworn enemies. They both want to wipe each other off the face of the earth and exactly why the hostages were taken in the first place is to bring israel to their knees and that's essentially what the ceasefire is and if this stops the momentum of the idf it will go completely counter to what netanyahu and his cabinet want to do which is obviously they're under the pressure of all this world pressure coming from the u.s canada the uk and 30 plus nations that have hostages being held in gaza right now so, Dan, drawing on your experience over the years in hostage negotiations, how, how much more difficult was this because of the dynamic that you just mentioned? Oh, there's, there's never been anything like this because uh, the, the scale and scope of the hostages, the fact that you had children as young as two to three months, uh, upwards of 85 years old that were taken, a lot of civilians, non-combatants were taken. Uh, there's never been anything to this level and the fact that it had such an international flavor to it so this has taken again hostage terrorism which is no again i was in iraq in 04 when the fallujah we found a kidnapping manual being used by al-qaeda and it was in a hamas kidnapping manual that stated simply no need to sh hunt lions when there are plenty of sheep to be had so this is something straight out of the calculus and something hamas is well familiar with, and they've just taken this to a, to a next level. Janice, uh, Gaza has, has received additional humanitarian aid and fuel since this pause began. Uh, what kind of difference can four days of ceasefire make in terms of, of you know, humanitarian aid? Ian, it can certainly make a difference because the situation inside Gaza for the civilian population is so awful. So. Fuel is finally going in, not in the amounts that are necessary, but it is going to the hospitals, it is going to run generators, it is going to run desalinization plants. And what's interesting here is that fuel is now being carefully tracked because the issue has been in the past that Hamas siphoned off that fuel. 200 trucks a day is the commitment under the agreement for four days. Now that is not enough, not anything like what's needed, but the real expectation is that this ceasefire, and that's what the president was talking about today, is going to be extended so that it is a 10-day pause, not a four-day pause. So let me ask both of you this, and I'll begin with you, Janice, uh, based on your experience, but also based on what you've seen here, uh, what are you looking for over the next few days? Well, I wasn't perturbed this morning when there was 15 minutes of fire, Dan, because most ceasefires have this kind of violation as they start. It often goes on for much longer. I am cautiously optimistic 
This, this deal is structured so that after the four days, for every 10 Israeli hostages, uh, 30 Palestinian prisoners, and most important, an extra day of ceasefire. It's Hamas that wants this ceasefire. So I am cautiously optimistic that this will last the 10 days. It's funny, Janice, that you describe yourself as cautiously optimistic because I've heard Dan in other interviews describe himself basically through his experience as, as a pessimist. So Dan, how, what are you looking for over the next few days? Well, I, I share her, uh, her optimism about what happened today. And yes, I hope it continues for three days. And it is in Hamas's best interest. They, this is what they wanted. This ceasefire gives them a chance to retrograde, retreat, uh, resupply and rearm themselves and fight to another day. But ultimately, uh, I am going to see this every day. I'll take it as it comes because until these hostages are in safe hands, so many things can go wrong. And I'm just going off personal experience in this realm from uh, my tour in Iraq. And Dan, I mean, I guess the thing is, is that for Hamas, it is the hostages like that is the you know, I, I don't want to say, I was going to say the card they have to play, but we're talking about human beings here. But but for Hamas, as long as they have hostages, they have bargaining power. That's right. Correct. Yeah, and that's their survivability, which is why they will hold on to some of these hostages for, for a considerable amount of time. Because the moment they give up all these hostages, what will stop the IDF from finishing them off? Janice, we have 30 seconds left. Last word to you. There's no doubt they're going to hold back on some of these hostages in, but again, there is grounds for optimism that a significant number will get out. And what the president's hoping, this feast ceasefire goes beyond the 10 days. That's the big question that we're looking at now. I really appreciate the analysis and experience both of you bring to this topic. Uh, Janice Stein, founding director of the Monk School of Global Affairs and Public Policy at the University of Toronto, and Dan O'Shea, a former U.S. Navy SEAL, former coordinator for the hostage working group with the U.S. Embassy in Iraq. Thanks to both of you. You're welcome. My pleasure.